Welcome to another episode of the Software Carpentry Lecture on Databases using Microsoft Access. This episode is on how to deal with missing data. Here is a table from a previous lecture. It tracks the work done on experiments broken down by the project and scientist. Notice that we've modified the data slightly for this lecture so that some data is missing. In the real world, data is not always complete. There are always holes. A database uses a special value for these holes, null. Null is not zero, false, or the empty string. It is just a different kind of value. So, for these rows where the hours have a null value, does this mean that the hours for these experiments are missing? Or does it mean that the value is not known? Or maybe it means something else. These are questions that we cannot answer just by looking at the data. But instead, we have to understand how the data is supposed to be interpreted. We will tackle this question in a future lecture on data modeling. In this lecture, we will discuss how to work with null values in our queries. Suppose we wanted to know which experiments are missing hours data. We do this by using the filter isNull in the criteria row of our query. We use is null and not simply null, like we would for any other filter, because for many database systems, null is a special value that isn't comparable to anything else. The is behaves like the equals operator, except that it returns true when comparing two null values. But if you forget and just use null, Access is smart enough to fix this for you. Here, you can see that the entries in the experiments table with missing hours fields are returned. To find all of the rows that do not have a null value, you can use is not null in the criteria row. Because null is a different type of value altogether, if your data may have null values in it, your queries must take this into account. For example, suppose we wanted to find all of the experiments which did not take 7 hours. You might write not equal to 7 in the criteria row of the hours column. Notice that the results are missing the records with null values in the hours field. Those records were filtered out because, as we've said, only the is and is not operator will return true when comparing a null to another value. If we mean for these rows to be included, we need to add to the criteria clause to explicitly check for null values. Now, when we run our query, we get back those records with null hours values along with the other records where the hours field doesn't equal 7. Null values are also handled differently by aggregation functions. Most aggregation functions ignore null values in their calculations. So, for instance, let's look at the sum function. To calculate the total number of hours spent on experiments, we'd start with a query like this. Click on Totals, and use Sum to add up the values. But this total is actually just the sum of all the numeric values. The null values are skipped. This is more important for functions like average, which depend on the total number of records in the aggregation. Null values are skipped, and so they don't count towards the average. The null values are not treated as zero. The average function just skips over them as if they weren't in the data set. This is also true for max, min, and count in Access. In this lecture, We've seen that databases use a special value called null for empty or missing information. This value has to be taken into account and handled in a unique way when you are writing queries. <laughs>